Hi, welcome back to another episode of Nature Aquariums TV, where today we're going to show you the ins and outs and tips and tricks on how to set up Oase's canister filters. We're going to show you all the real cool tips and tricks to make installation a lot easier. But before we go on that, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to this channel below so we can have more videos like this for you. All right, so we get a lot of questions at the store. Hey, how do we set this up? Uh, this is a really, really excellent filter from Oase. They're super easy to clean and maintain, but setting up is the key thing over here. So today's video, we're gonna show you how we set these up really quickly, what the ins and outs, and the things that you should avoid. We're also gonna unbox it so you can see everything that applies. Now, the Oase Biomaster filters come in multiple sizes. There's the 250, the 350, the 600, and the 850, and both of them can be had with or without the heater. Now, the nice thing about them is once you learn one, they're all identical. The biggest change is the size of the motor and the height of the canister itself. But as far as the assembly, the setting up, the cleaning, it's all the same, and that's what we're gonna show you today. You learn one filter, you've learned them all. All right, so one of the first things that you're gonna find is that you have two parts. You have the filter and the box of the accessories. Now the box of the accessories comes in several parts. One, there's gonna be a bag with all the, uh, the fittings and some very important parts in here. Two, you're gonna get a lot of tubing, and we're gonna discuss that in a second. Since this is a thermo model, it does come with the heater, and in case you ever want to pull the heater out of the canister filter and put it inside your aquarium, it also comes with the attachment uh, set so you can suction cup it to the inside of your aquarium. It also comes with the cap that allows you to plug the hole where the heater goes in so you can run it without a heater. Your all important warranty and registration cards and instruction manuals. And you have the tubing for the inflow and outflow, which we'll discuss in a minute. Tip number one, when setting this up, this tube will fight you the whole way, okay? The best way to deal with this, grab yourself a large pasta pot. Now, you're not gonna be making Italian, you know, dinner tonight, but you will be setting up your filter. Fill this with water, tap water is fine, and coil it inside your pot that you normally use to cook. And you're gonna put this on the stove top and get it warm to the point of almost boiling, about 190 degrees. You do not want to get it to, to boiling, but what you're doing is softening up this tubing. By doing so, it allows you to then properly hang the tubing from your aquarium. It also is going to expand the tube itself, so it allows you to put it into the bar fittings. That is super important because, as I'm going to show you later on a close-up, as the tubing cools, it's gonna make a super airtight seal around the, uh, the fittings. So that is a critical part. Do not cut this until you've actually softened it up. So leave it all, it comes in one length. It should be plenty for most aquariums. Second, it's the bag of accessories. First part that you should be looking at would be, these are the rubber legs. get four of them they go into the bottom of the filter like so make sure they snap into place and they'll help with vibration and at the same time it elevates the canister filter so it leaves an air gap uh, for drying off if you ever spill any water it doesn't trap water in there now it sits very nicely like that. It dampens vibration inside your cabinet. These here are the next parts of your 
filter. So you have the suction cups, which you're going to use to hold your inflow and outflow. And the way you get them in, you just rotate like that and they snap into place. Next thing, these are identical. These are for the inflow and outflow pipes. This is what's going to go in and out of your tank. Now, I'm gonna show you what this would look like in your aquarium. The side with the adjustment, which you can use a flathead screwdriver or a coin to adjust, allows you to adjust some of the flow, would go on the inside. This part is the one that's gonna have the hose. And you get these nuts over here. And one of the key important things to think about this is you to put them on, you obviously screw them in clockwise. Once you slip on your tubing and it's going to be warm, which it's going to slip in easily, whereas now I can't get it on there, you will hold the tubing against the arm over here and actually unscrew it until it tightens. And it's a little bit counterintuitive, but it's important that you do that. That's what will create a proper airtight seal. Most canister filter owners have an issue that they get micro air bubbles, and that's because they did not unscrew this with the tubing being warm, which is super important for you to warm up your tubing. This works the same way on the canister filter itself. So you get four of these, two for the inflow and outflow, that go into the aquarium, like such, and two of these that will go onto the canister filter itself. Then the rest of the equipment, you have one solid inlet tube. It does not have any holes. The other ones that are come in are the spray bar, so they have the holes. They're the same length, but one are drilled and the other one isn't. You grab your inflow tube, put it as such, this goes in there, this goes in there. Now you are ready to take in the water from your, filter, uh, from your tank. This will go into your canister filter and that's what keeps fish and larger debris from getting into the filter. The outflow, once again this goes into here and this is supposed to go out into your tank can be worked in two different ways. You apply your elbow. If you want a strong jet style flow, you put this piece here and you can actually divert it. Or if you want it to shoot upwards to oxygenate your water, you can do that. But then if you want a spray bar set up, you attach your spray bar like so. If you have a particularly long tank, that's what this piece does it allows you to set up a really long spray bar. It is important that you grab the cap and you cap whichever piece you're gonna use as your final one. So if you have a really large tank and you wanna have a very long spray bar, you can do it as this. Or if you wanna have a single spray bar, you grab the one that has the cap and you put it like that. And this is actually really good on 13 inch tanks like 55s, uh, 30s, 29s, because you can set it on the short end of the tank and aim it so it's going towards the opposite side. One thing to note, I would like to give everybody a tip, is when setting up on an aquarium, you always want to mount your intake and your outflow kind of together and make sure that they're shooting out towards the long end of the tank, not towards the short end. Because if you do it on the long end on one corner going to the long side, the water will travel this way. And if you put the intake back on the same side, it forces the water to recirculate and come back from the bottom of the tank, picking up your detritus and eliminating dead zones. Most aquascapers set up the tanks this way. And if they have multiple canister filters on a really big tank, they set up both intake and outflows on one side and on the other side. But for most uses, set them up this way. Uh, about 10, 15 years ago, they were setting up on opposite sides, but what happens is it creates a lot of dead zones here on this side where the outflow is. All right, so now we're gonna get to the really cool part, the canister filter, right? So Oase did a, a couple of really cool things. 
All their filters are this gray and blue color. The blue is very specific, not because it's part of their logo, but anything in blue is what they call user movable items. So as you can see, the releases onto the sides, they're in blue. The little uh, fittings to tighten the hose in, in blue, the primer and the pre-filters in blue, the little knob for the uh, heater is in blue. So all these are in blue means that you can move them. So first things we're gonna talk about. Uh, when you first get your, your filter, before you even put any water, there's a couple things that you wanna do. It's brand new and it's, it's never been opened before. So this lever over here actually does your water flow shut off. In other words, once your tank is, is filled up and it's been running and you need to do some maintenance on the filter, you need to turn off the power, always unplug the heater and the actual motor. You don't want to have the heater running because it can short circuit and, and burn out. But if you go and cut the power off, how do you keep the water from spilling all over your living room or inside your, your, your tank? So this lever over here actually shuts off the flow so it can't siphon water out. Secondly, this pops out. So once you have your tubes hanging from the side of the tank, this allows you to move your tubing and you can actually lift and move your canister filter out of the way for servicing. Now, this also serves another purpose. All assays have this wonderful pre-filter, which I'm about to show you right now. The pre-filter traps all the debris from getting into the, into the baskets over here, and it really cuts down on the maintenance because it's a very fast maintenance. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Say this is your weekly maintenance, and you're like, well, I gotta go and clean the filter. You unplug both cords, you slide over the water cutoff, so now there's no more water going into the filter, and then you slide over this and this is the wonderful pre-filter and I say wonderful because I use these here at our display tanks and they get very dirty guys and it has a full set of sponges that you just take to the sink and rinse them clean once you do that they're nice and clean you slide these back over like so slide the cover just rinse this in the sink as well it snaps in place and I'll tell you I would put a little quarter cap of dechlorinator into here because you are going to have chlorinated water and slide this in here that locks it in place and now you release water back into the tank before you plug this in you're gonna see the tank gurgling a little bit because it's actually taking the air that was inside here and replacing with water from your tank. So you may have to go and add half a gallon to a quarter of a gallon of water because that's what it took up depending on the size of the filter. Once the bubbling is done, you plug in your heater and your filter and you're done. I've had multiple customers time me here on the showroom floor being busy and it takes about two and a half minutes to clean out the sponge filters. That would be your weekly maintenance. Depending on your fish bio load, you may not have to open up the filter itself for the regular maintenance for every four to six to eight weeks, depending on your fish load and the size of the filter. So that is the biggest revolutionary difference between this filter and everybody else. Moving back, you're gonna use the same thing now to do maintenance. You unplug the heater and the filter. You slide the selection over to cut off the water flow. You unlatch, you unlatch the back one. In order to unlatch the side ones, there's a little protection over here. You have to raise the handle and you pop these open. And now the whole head comes up. And as you can see, this is the pre-filter and priming mechanism. This is the actual heater inside here. So make sure that you lay this like so someplace. There will be some water, so make sure it's in the water safe area. Inside the heater, the filter, you're gonna have multiple baskets. Your top basket is a polishing basket 
followed by multiple sponge and media baskets. Now you're gonna say, how do I know which way to put it in? Well, as you can see inside the canister filter, there is a run around cutout, and that's where that would cut out and the baskets would fit in. So, when you get these from the, uh, the box, this is fluidized media. And the way this media is for your biological filtration. Do not leave it in the mesh bag because the way this media is supposed to work, it's supposed to tumble and move around inside this basket. They put it in the mesh bag for shipping to make sure you don't end up with this stuff all over the box. Um, but once you get it out, put it in. Now, personally, I like leaving one of these this way and replacing this with either Ciparax from Sarah or Matrix from Seachem. They both provide different biological filtration capabilities and it really complements one to the other. All right, so we've covered the biological uh, filtration. These are always going to sit at the bottom. By the way, these are fully customizable so that if you really want to add a third basket of biological, say you have a really heavily stocked African cichlid tank or a marine tank, you just take out one of these sponges and replace it here with your favorite media. Now all of these have a ridge over here and these are to ensure that when you're stacking them in there to make sure that that ridge fits inside. This creates a watertight seal and it, this is a true zero bypass filter. Uh, a lot of canister filters have a little bit of bypass. That means that as the media gets clogged, it bypasses. It doesn't really get the, the biological interaction that you're looking for with the Osei filters. By the way, these uh, baskets nest all the water is forced to go inside these baskets and it creates a tunnel. Then let's talk about chemical filtration, right? We all have our favorite, whether it's uh, Chemipure or whether it's Purigen or Carbon or Zeolite, whatever it is that you want to use. That's what these blue sponge filled baskets are for. And you can either save one of these, keep them in, in the box then for later use. Or what I like to do is I personally like to cut these in half and lay my uh, chemical filtration right inside the basket and then I put one of the sponges on top of it. But that's up to you, you know, I'm just giving you some best practices. When you are stacking this inside the filter, you're going to always start with your biological goes at the bottom, like so. sure that they're snapped into place. And by the way, for cleaning, these will be holding bacteria as well. So the best practice to clean these sponges is always to use either RODI water, old tank water, or water that's been uh, dechlorinated with either Prime or Ultimate or whatever your favorite dechlorinator is. And my best practice is to always grab a uh, bucket. Now remember, because of the powerful action of the pre-filter, these are not going to get as dirty as you've been used to in other canister filters. So you can really use your sink and your faucet or hose to clean the pre-filters because dirt not really being your biological source, they're really acting like as if you were to put a sponge over your intake. Whereas these will be housing your biological bacteria. So do use the chlorinator or dechlorinated water to clean them. All right guys, so I could not finish this video without covering a super important part of the maintenance of this filter. And that is how to properly clean the pump head and motor. Now this may seem a little daunting to most, but it's super easy and I'm going to show you how easy it is. So having your pump head in some place where if it gets a little wet, it doesn't matter. At the bottom, you're going to actually see these two pieces. This snaps out of place. It's what actually uh, holds the propeller in place. Slide this to the side and 
This is the propeller. This is what's moving the water in and out of your tank. Uh, this is going to end up being very sludge with brown sludge. Go ahead and clean it with a brush and then get a filter brush and actually clean the inside here. You can also grab a paper towel, wipe and rinse. Use some uh, uh, kitchen water, you know, faucet water and actually rinse this. Uh, what's nice with the OSA filters, they are on the stainless steel shaft, so for, long, uh, for longevity. Uh, also make sure you don't use these O-rings and you're going to stick that back in there. Then the little propeller cover goes like that and this piece slides in place. That is all the maintenance you need to do on the motorhead. All right, so we've covered how to set up the inside of your filter. We've kind of covered all these things. Uh, I want to give you a couple tips and tricks on uh, to finalize the installation. One, this is the cord for your heater. All heaters, especially these that are mechanical electrical heaters, have about a life expectancy of about three years. I would suggest that you write with a Sharpie with a pen on the tag the date that you put it in action. So three years from now, you can actually go and replace them and you won't run the risk of a heater ever being stuck open. Two, when you're setting this in underneath your cabinet, make sure that the primer and the pre-filter is readily accessible. What's nice with the OASE is that the tubing for the inflow and outflow can be actually adjusted to whatever direction. So if you wanted to mount your um, your canister filter as such with this part facing you, you can actually adjust these towards the back like this. If you want to put it this way and the pipes are back here, just rotate this so it lines up with wherever your tubing is going. Secondly, when you first start up and you're taking your tubing, remember I told you to warm it up in the pasta pot. Okay, first start from the top. So you're going to go to this is your tank up above, your inflow is, is attached with this super hot and make sure you may have to wear gloves because I don't want you getting yourself burnt. You put it in here, you're going to tighten it up, then you're going to let this dangle and the other end is going to come down say to the intake. Make sure that you give yourself about an 8 inch slack of tubing because when you set up your, your filter there's going to be air that's going to be trapped in there and some things to get rid of the air, you kind of have to rock your filter back and forth a couple of times when you first power it on. That is normal with all canister filters. Remember, this thing is full of air, and now you're putting in water for the first time. If you cut your tubing so short, you will not be able to rock it back and forth. Also, it helps you in maintenance if you have to go and remove your in, uh, inflow and outflow pipes. So. 8 inches, 8 to 10 inches of slack, not longer than that. Do not let the tubing go in this, you know, or droop because that will create a lot of back pressure for the uh, filter. Your filter tubing should always kind of look like this, never drooping down below the filter. So now you go, cut it in, and set up the second one. Always start from the top, adjust it. This will be held onto the aquarium by uh, suction cups. You bring this down, makes an airtight seal, give the extra of the tubing, making sure you leave yourself a little slack like this, tighten it up. Now, it's all hooked up. You make sure that this is on the lock mode. This is on the lock mode. The last super duper piece of technology in this filter, it's a primer. And what a primer does, when you push down on this, it creates a very powerful suction on the inlet side to start water flowing into your canister filter. And what you're going to see, you're going to press this once, it actually creates suction that's actually sucking my finger into the inlet. It's going to start bringing the water in over the rim of the tank, down into the canister filter, and it's going to fill this whole thing up with water. Once you see it, uh, you stop hearing it, gurgling and bubbling, then you can plug in your heater and your motor. And it's going to be running. At first, when you set, first set this up, 
you will hear a little bit of bubble noises you'll hear a little bit of clanking that's normal what i told you block your canister filter left and right back and forward and it'll work itself out within 24 hours this thing's going to be super 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 quiet so folks this is all there is to this if you have additional questions that's what the comments line below is there for i'll more than happy to reply back to you and as always all these wonderful assay filters are available on our website you can purchase them we're actually the only florida premier retailer for oase we've achieved our highest level of sales and training and we're here to help you and assist you with any questions you may have with them and thanks for watching and remember to like share and subscribe and have a super duper great day